going to the front of the Aurora 344 horizontal pump. I will explain next the location, function and characteristics of each subcomponent of this pump system. This is the Aurora 344 pump. The pump consists of the main casing, support and a gasket. The impeller and impeller subcomponents are inside the pump casing mounted on the pump shaft. Those components will be explained as part of the shaft assembly. This is the pump casing. The pump casing. Along with the casing bracket. Surround the impeller. It is where the kinetic energy imparted to the fluid by the impeller is transformed into pressure potential energy. It is usually cast as one piece and made out of cast iron. It has an inlet at the center through which the fluid enters into the impeller's eye. It also has an outlet or exit through which the higher pressure fluid exits the pump. This is the pump bracket. The pump bracket seals the back side of the casing and contains the mechanical seal. It is bolted to the bearing housing. This is the pump gasket. It seals the mating surface between the pump casing and the pump bracket. This is the pump support. The pump support connects the pump bracket to the pump's foot pads. This is the pump bearing housing. The bearing housing contains the bearings that support the pump's shaft. It is bolted to the pump bracket. The bearing housing rests upon two foot pads that are connected to the pump's base plate. This is the pump bearing housing frame. The bearing housing frame is the main piece of the bearing housing that contains the bearings. Its front side bolts to the pump bracket. And its back side is closed by the bearing housing cap. The bearing housing has a groove on its inside front surface within which the front bearing is located. It also has a hole in its front surface, through which the pump's shaft passes. This is the pump bearing housing cap. The bearing housing cap is bolted to the back of the bearing housing. It has a hole at its center, through which the pump's shaft passes. It also has a groove. within which the pump's back bearing is located. This is the pump bearing O-ring. The O-ring seals the interface between the bearing housing frame and the bearing housing cap. This is the pump electric drive motor. The motor converts electric power into mechanical torque that is used to rotate the pump's shaft. This is the pump motor body. The body contains the motor windings that convert electric current to rotary motion of the motor's shaft. This is the motor shaft. The motor shaft connects to the pump shaft through a coupling system. This is the motor's electric power cable. The power cable supplies electric power to run the motor. The power cable should be connected to the motor from an overhead position to avoid creating a tripping hazard around the pump. This is the inlet pipe. The fluid is pulled into the pump from the inlet pipe. The inlet pipe is bolted to the pump's inlet. This is the outlet pipe. The fluid exiting the pump goes into the outlet pipe. The outlet pipe is bolted to the pump's outlet. This is the pump shaft assembly. The shaft assembly is the main moving part of the pump. It includes the pump shaft. The impeller. 
the bearings. The mechanical seal. The coupling to the motor. And various seals. Slingers. And wear rings. This is the pump shaft. The impeller is mounted at one end of the shaft, while the other end is connected to the motor's shaft, through a coupling. The shaft is supported by two bearings that are located in the bearing housing. This is the pump impeller. The impeller is mounted on the pump's shaft and rotates with it. The impeller imparts kinetic energy to the fluid as it rotates. The impeller shown here is a single suction closed impeller. This means the liquid enters into the impeller's eye from only one side along the impeller's axis. And the impeller has shrouds on both sides. The impeller has several veins that impart kinetic energy to the fluid as the impeller rotates. This is the pump impeller screw. The screw holds the impeller to the pump's shaft. This is the pump impeller key. The key connects the impeller to the pump's shaft and prevents the impeller from rotating independently of the shaft. These are the pump impeller back rings. The back rings provide a running joint between the impeller and the pump casings bracket. These are the pump front rings. Just like the back rings, the front rings provide a running joint between the impeller and the pump's casing. This is the pump impeller cap screw seal. The seal prevents the fluid from entering between the impeller and the pump's shaft. This is the pump's impeller cap screw gasket. The gasket separates the cap screw seal from the end of the impeller. This is the pump's impeller back gasket. The back gasket seals the mating surface between the pump's impeller and the sleeve of the mechanical seal. This is the pump's mechanical seal. The mechanical seal is a controlled leakage device that prevents excessive leakage from the pump. It separates the fluid containing area of the pump from the rest of the pumping unit. It is composed of eight main parts. A flexible cup. A stationary seat. A washer. Flexible bellows. A retainer. A drive ring. A spring. And a sleeve. This is the mechanical seal flexible cup. The flexible cup. rests against the back of the pump's bracket on one side and against the stationary seat of the mechanical seal on the other side. The flexible cup does not rotate with the pump's shaft. This is the pump's mechanical seal stationary seat. The stationary seat has a highly polished and very flat face that is spring-loaded against the mechanical seal's washer. The stationary seat does not rotate with the pump's shaft. The mating surface between the stationary seat and the rotating washer of the mechanical seal, form the primary sealing surface of the mechanical seal. The stationary seat and the rotating washer are in near contact while the pump is operating, being separated by a thin film of liquid. This is the pump's mechanical seal washer. The washer has a highly polished and very flat face. 
that is spring-loaded against the mechanical seal's stationary seat. The washer rotates with the pump's shaft. This is the pump's mechanical seal bell OHS. The bell OHS evenly distribute the pressure from the mechanical seal's spring on the back surface of the mechanical seal's washer. The bell OHS also seal the surface around the periphery of the pump's shaft. This is the pump's mechanical seal retainer. The retainer wraps around the moving elements of the mechanical seal. Those elements are the mechanical seal's flexible bellows and washer. This is the pump's mechanical seal drive ring. The drive ring fits on the back of the mechanical seal's retainer. This is the pump's mechanical seal spring. The spring is loaded by a precise amount during the installation of the mechanical seal. The spring applies a constant pressure to the mating surfaces of the mechanical seal. That keeps the stationary seat and the rotating washer pressed together. If the pressure from the spring is too low, excessive leakage can occur from the mechanical seal. On the other hand if the pressure from the spring is too large, the fluid film layer between the washer and seat can be disrupted causing metal-to-metal -metal contact to occur. If metal-to-metal -metal rubbing occurs, this can destroy the mechanical seal very quickly, and result in excessive leakage. This is the pump's mechanical seal sleeve. The spring of the mechanical seal rides on top of the sleeve. The back end of the sleeve is separated from the impeller by a gasket. This is the pump's front bearing. It is a ball bearing. That supports the pump's shaft. The bearing can be lubricated using oil or grease. This bearing, rests in a groove. In the front part of the bearing housing. This is the pump's front bearing seal. The seal prevents oil or grease from leaking out of the bearing, and also keeps contaminants out of the bearing. This is the pump's front bearing slinger. The slinger rides on the pump's shaft, between the pump's bracket and the front bearing seal. This is the pump's back bearing. Just like the front bearing, the back bearing is a ball bearing. That supports the pump's shaft. It can be lubricated using oil or grease. This bearing, rests in a groove. In the bearing housing's cap. It has a small thrust plate that permits it to more effectively handle axial thrust loads from the pump. This is the pump's back bearing seal. Just like the front bearing seal, the back bearing seal prevents oil or grease from leaking out of the bearing, and also keeps contaminants out of the bearing. This is the pump's back bearing slinger. The slinger rides on the pump's shaft, between the back bearing seal and the pump's coupling. This is the pump's back bearing ring. The ring snaps into a groove on the shaft behind the pump's back bearing and holds that bearing in place. This is the pump's shaft coupling. The coupling rigidly connects the shaft of the pump to the shaft of the motor. These are the pump's shaft cup placing keys. The keys prevent the coupling faces from sliding on the shaft as the shaft rotates. This is the pump's foundation. 
The foundation consists of the pump's base plate and the concrete platform substructure. This is the pump platform's rebar cage. The rebar cage reinforces the pump's concrete platform. This is the pump platform's anchor bolts. The anchor bolts are used to tie down the pump's base plate to the concrete platform. This is the pump platform's anchor bolt sleeves. The sleeves surround the anchor bolts, and allow for small flexing of the anchor bolts. This allows the anchor bolts to easily go into their holes in the pump's base plate. Despite slight shifting of the anchor bolts positions during the pouring of the concrete platform. This is the pump's concrete platform. The concrete platform is massive enough to absorb the pump's vibrations and forces without much flexing. This prevents the pump components from becoming misaligned due to a shifting or cracked foundation. This is the pump's base plate. The pump and its driver are mounted on the base plate. The shown base plate is a solid steel cast base plate. These are the pump foot pads. They support the pump and they are bolted to or embedded into the pump's base plate. The surface of the foot pads is flat and smooth in order to ensure correct pump alignment during its installation. These are the pump motor foot pads. The motor has four foot pads, upon which it rests. On the base plate, the surface of the foot pads is flat and smooth in order to ensure correct motor alignment during its installation. These are the pump bearing housing foot pads. The foot pads support the bearing housing. They are connected to the pump's base plate. This is the pump's base plate grout. The grout is used to fill the space between the base plate and the concrete platform. When the grout cures it forms a very strong bond between the base plate and the concrete platform. This is the pump's coupling guard. If the coupling fails, the coupling guard acts as a shield that prevents shrapnel pieces from the coupling, from being ejected into the pump's surroundings.